Hey, Jesus Freak. Time for the naked truth. Where are you going? It's still a sin in God's eyes. See? All right, let's try this and get my clothes on. Okay, first off, you say that it's a sin in God's eyes to go to a strip club? Is that the NIV or the KJV? W what Bible verse says thou shalt not go to a strip club? Or even view naked people? It's not in there. I've read the book twice. It ain't in there. God sets the standards. He sets the rules. And if I say it doesn't offend me, and you say it doesn't offend you, and we decide to do something, it it's still wrong in God's eyes if we were to find God. This has got to be the worst thing ever. I hate this. That out of out of all of Christians' little bags of tricks, uh, I hate this the most. And that is when you say that, uh, oh, well, it doesn't offend me. I have no problem with it at all. But God has a problem with it, so therefore I must act upon it and, and agree with God and say that it's bad and evil and wrong and you're going to burn it out forever. Either husbands or boyfriends, porn interests. They're, you know, going to strip clubs and such. Many women learn to tolerate it because they're basically told, you know, oh, well, what are you going to do? Men will be men. You know, they're, they're oh, great. Poor women have to tolerate a man going to a strip club. Not like in the Bible when they're sold into slavery. Or, um, oh gosh, I don't know, a prostituted out. You know, it's still wrong in the eyes of God. And of course, I'm always going to argue from the, that, that perspective. Again, 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 again. Where in the Bible does it say the naked body is a sin? God was shocked when he went down to Adam and Eve and saw that they were clothed, they had fig leaves on them. What are you doing to my perfect creation, covering it up like that? What's wrong with you? Oh crap, you ate from the tree that I put blatantly in front of your face and told you not to eat from. I could have had a V8. I have thoughts and ideas of what sin is. I go to the creator of what is moral and correct. And that is God. God tells us what is right and what is wrong. Yeah, what exactly again is the Bible's stance on sex? Oh yeah, it should be between one man and one woman. Man shall not lie with a man. Oh yeah, and if an angry mob comes to your door, throw your virgin daughters at them. Oh, and gee, if you have to leave town because God is going to smite the town, um, let your daughters get you drunk so that they can rape you. Yeah, that's where we get our morals from and our viewpoints on sex and how we treat women with such delicacy and and they're such delicate flowers that will throw them to an angry mob to be raped. <sighs> Your Bible is pathetic. And you trying to justify your religion through that Bible is even more so. He has some very unrealistic expectations of, of sex and um, natural, you know, reaction between men and women. You know, they, they look at real life sex and they compare it to the fantasy sex of the porn industry and they say, whoa, you know, this fantasy stuff is way more exciting than this, you know, I mean. <laughs> 
I don't know who you've been dating, but I get porn sex all the time. Hell, I'm getting a knob job right this second. All right, baby. <laughs> it actually, it makes them become items that people can purchase. It makes women become items that you can purchase. You mean like when you go to the grocery store and they offer you up some customer service and, uh, a, you know, service with a smile. Aren't you part of your grocery bill paying for that smile as well? So now the grocery store clerk, male or female, is a slave to you and your money. Get real. The people that are in the industry are in it because they like doing what they're doing. Just like most cab drivers or truck drivers do it because they like what they do. Not because they have to. Not because they're forced into it. Are you forced to fix machines at a cow club in place or whatever you work at? You know, come on. If you are forced to work there, then that's your own damn fault. This world naked. I guess he could have made the human body to be able to knit together cotton and polyester little suits and have us born. Stop the presses. Did you just say knit together cotton and polyester? Mixing fibers? You're gonna burn in hell for that. Why don't you even, do you even read your own book? Do you even read it at all, ever? It's in there, no mixing of materials. And here you bring it up. Oh, God's gonna mix materials. No, he isn't. He knows better. He wrote the damn book, right? That's what you think, right? Our lives. So let's not confuse, you know, their being ashamed of their physical appearances and the actual right and wrong nature of them actually being uh, naked. And then you put up on the message that God should not be blamed for the sins of mankind. Poor God can't be blamed for what he created and that sex within the confines of a marriage is acceptable any sexual action outside the confines of marriage is iniquity and we need to make sure that we abstain from that and again you say that any sex outside of marriage is iniquity um but where again is that in the Bible? It's not there, is it? Just isn't there. You know, most of the people that say there's nothing wrong, wrong with pornography would be very, very unhappy if they went home and found out that their mom was starring in a video where, you know, 20 guys are, you know, having their way with her. They would be very, very disillusioned. And their respect for their mother would probably... My mom is 82 years old. Yes, I would be very surprised if she was starring in a porn film. But would I be supportive of her in her decision to do what she felt was right with her own body and her one and only life? Damn Skippy, I would be supportive of her. I would be bigger than that and be able to suppress my own feelings of really kind of disgust at an 82 year old in porn but I would be able to suppress that and be supportive of her with what she wants to do with her one and only life and you can substitute my daughter or my wife, if my wife said she wanted to act in porn movies, well, you know, it's a different vocation, but I have to be supportive of you because I love you with all my heart. And I want to support you in whatever endeavors 
you want to pursue. And it's just selfish pride and egotism that prevents you from acknowledging that. From you going, I'll never let my daughter into porn. Well, guess what? Your daughter's probably going to run straight to porn. Because she's not being taught about it. She's not being told about it. She... Uh, come on, Jesus freak. When it, when you were a kid, everything that you were told not to do, didn't you do? And now that's what makes you a guilty, remorseful little sinner, is the little things that you were told not to do that you did? This is called reverse education. And you're going to do a fine job on your daughter. Hey, let me tell you this, yeah. People say that as a Christian, you know, oh, you Christians, I mean, people say you Christians, you're sexually repressed. Yeah, I'm sexually repressed. You know, God asks us to repress a lot of our desires. He asks us to repress the desire to be disobedient, dishonorable to our mother and father. He asks us to repress the desires to use vitriolic, hateful, vile language and uh, hateful talk. He also asks us to repress the urge to you know, take his name in vain. We are asked to repress the urge to covet another man's wife and properties. We are also encouraged to repress the idea to commit adultery. I mean, it's very clear. God asks us to repress, you know, ourselves. And that kind of leads us to the biggest question of all, Jesus Freak, is if God is not real, if the atheists are right, then you've wasted your entire life masturbating in a closet when you could have been out having a little bit of fun. And who would it have harmed anyway? No one. But what is your religion doing harm to? Your own sexual repressed person persona. That's what makes religion pathetic.